Okay, so um, first I think it would be important for me to just talk about our context a little bit, uh, and it'll maybe help you understand why the peer, um, our peer network is really critical for us, and not just our peer network, but our all the mentors that we've had over the years. Um, if you gave me two hours, I could talk about that also, <laughs> but I will focus on our, our, our peer group for now. Um, so our context is we're first generation. Uh, I grew up in Winnipeg, and Vian spent um, part of his life in Pretoria, South Africa, and then moved uh, here when he was 15. Many of you who know him know that he always wanted to farm, and so he was coming to Canada, and he was on a mission. Uh, so he started farming uh, or working on farms at the age of 18. Um, I started farming with him in 2012 when we moved to Westman. We rented land uh, close to Nesbit, and uh, we rented land. Uh, we ran the whole operation on rented land until just recently, until 2018, uh, when we purchased a quarter section from um, another practitioner and a friend of ours. So we're both full-time on the farm now, uh, as of 2014. So we make 100% uh, of our income from the farm, but we direct market most of what we produce on the farm. So we're a livestock operation. Uh, as Ryan um, was telling you earlier, in our peer management group, there's a number of us, uh, and the farms themselves are quite diversified. We uh, have a lot in common in terms of our interest in sort of regenerative agriculture and uh, soil management, um, but we have, like he was saying, we've got you know, mixed livestock, we've got cropping, uh, we've got seed stock uh, operations. Um, but from our farm, 90% of what we produce is actually going into the direct market stream. So we are uh, having, it's all meats cut and wrapped, and then we are taking it to market, uh, which would be like Brandon and Winnipeg, that sort of thing. I feel like I want to go to the, there we go. Um, so we um, took the holistic, holistic management course with Ryan and another group of individuals maybe in uh, 2015. 2015. Um, and we sort of formed a, a, a peer group loosely um, and we weren't meeting as often as we would have liked. Um, but more recently we have started more regular monthly meetings. and. Um, one of the things that was really important for us uh, was to talk about uh, goal setting or a statement of purpose. And so for our farm, um, we're focused on uh, providing meaningful work and secure livelihood where people are valued and managing livestock in a way that enhances natural systems. So this idea of like building nature, building soil and providing our customers with food from healthy animals and healthy land. So networking. Um, our local networks would really be our peer management group, so our holistic management group. Um, we worked with others through a student exchange. Uh, we've had people come to our farm, which has been really important for us as well in terms of our um, learning. And then also through, uh, we have a very large network of individuals through our direct marketing and social networks. So our peer management group. Um, we didn't grow up on family farms and in some cases that you, some might consider that to be beneficial because um, succession can be really difficult and it can be difficult for people to sort of go out and start on their own. But in other ways there were limitations for us. We moved out here and we knew deep down that we needed people. We needed relationships with people that could mentor us but we also needed a group of peers to work with. Um, our peer group uh, we feel provides us with a certain level of accountability um, we get to discuss ideas with people. Um, there's ongoing discussion and support. And it sort of provides some of that community that we may not otherwise have. I would say that our group provides us with exposure to new ideas and ways of thinking about our business, but it also creates checks and balances because like, sometimes we really have terrible ideas. And uh, you, know, you want someone in your group to tell you, like, maybe, maybe don't try that. <laughs> And then at other times you really need encouragement because you might want to be trying something new. You might be pioneering in a way and without, um, without that additional support you might not sort of feel you have it in you to try something new. Um, the other thing that I think is important about our peer management group and it's been really important for us especially since we've, had, we've added to our family is that the discussions, they are, pro they are production focused but not solely. Uh, so it's sort of this whole farm and ranch planning, um, talking about other things outside of the production circle. So talking about, um, we recently were talking about managing stress. Um, we talk about some of the bigger picture things like, you know, um, sort of 
succession planning and planning for the future. And one other thing is I, I, I think that having a peer management group is, or even a management group or some sort of support group is really good for mental health. Um, farmers often suffer alone in this and uh, I think it's really important that people uh, create sort of networks of support um, amongst themselves. So one other thing that we've done on our farm is uh, we've had uh, student volunteers uh, or farm stays. So what's been really great about this is we've been able to have sort of peer-to-peer -peer exchange. A lot of them are within our age group and are interested in doing similar things to, that, to what we're doing. Some of them are first generation. Uh, and so they actually seek us out because they want to see you know, the, the processes that we went through in order to make it work. People that are looking for sort of more alternative uh, land access arrangements will sometimes come visit our farm um, simply because we did, uh, f for a number of years, we lived and worked on, on rented acres. So we actually moved farms, uh, well, Vian can tell you, but we, we moved maybe four or five times uh, and would set up every single time that we went. All of our infrastructure was portable. We ran all livestock. Um, and basically, we would, take up, we would take the farm and then set it up somewhere else. And that sometimes had to do with the fact that you know, land tenures were shorter than others or we needed access to more land. Um, so people come to see us for that. Um, the great thing about the student volunteers or farm stays is we get a new set of eyes to ask us questions about why we're doing things the way we're doing. Uh, so that's been important for us. Um, it's important to us to encourage the next generation of producers as well, regardless of whether or not they grew up on a farm. Um, and then it helps us to revisit our statement of purpose. Like, are we actually creating meaningful livelihoods for people, or are we creating a meaningful experience for people that come to the farm? And there's always something that we can improve on, always. And so bringing in a new set of eyes sometimes just helps us to sort of revisit this idea that, you know, the farm is, there's always something to do, and it's a work in progress. So these photographs here, actually, there's a... Um, there's Eustace, who's been was picking the eggs. He came to us uh, for two months from Lithuania. Uh, he was in an agricultural program in uh, Denmark. And then Joey, uh, we were doing a farm tour that day, and he was helping us out. Um, but he stayed with us for about four months, and he came from Calgary. Uh, he came from suburban Calgary, had had no farm experience, but he was pretty amazing. I think we took him, took him on a cattle drive on like the second day that he arrived. So. Uh, so one of the things that's really been important for us is uh, our direct marketing network. And I know that, you know, you, we might say, oh, well, that's not specifically related to your rural farm network. But ultimately, we're producing food for people. And producing food for people means that if we're delivering this food to these people, we are accessing an incredibly, an incredibly diverse community of individuals. Um, it creates, a, it expands our network. Um, we know people all over the province. Um, another thing that's really important for us with our customer base is um, there's lots of knowledge sharing that's happening. So we have people that work in other fields, uh, biology, conservation, people in the universities. Um, there's a higher, well, there's, there is a high level of accountability for us, and it doesn't, you, you know, you don't have to be direct marketing to feel a high level of accountability, but we are feeding people directly, and so we feel quite responsible for the, our day-to-day -day management on the farm. And we feel that it gives us an elevated desire to succeed. Uh, so, you know, transitioning from one farm to another or trying to access more land, um, you know, even having, like this, this season, you know, we, we were in that, that hailstorm and, I mean, things are difficult, sure, but we often think back to, okay, well, people are relying on us for their season's food or for next year, for the year after that. Uh, so we have relationships, we have regular contact with people. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit just about building a network. Um, we feel that you really have to, you have to put a lot of, of energy in. Um, I took this image from, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I was recently reading a book um, called Belong by Radha Agrawal, and she sort of uh, writes a lot about sort of in community engagement and becoming a part of your community, and I thought it sort of related to this topic a little bit for farmers as well. Uh, so you have, there has to be a willingness to participate, and on the exterior of this sort of uh, diagram, 
um, there's this, it says exploring. So there's exploring, participating, and then there's the outer and the inner circle. So exploring might be, um, you know, communicating with people through social media, um, going to conferences, um, taking part in, you know, field tours and that sort of thing. Um, and participating is actively engaging and becoming an organizer and becoming involved and showing up, so to speak. Uh, and I feel like with our peer management group, we're starting to, we're beginning to form what we'd call a sort of an, in, an inner and outer circle where we're willing to share things that are more intimate, which I think is really important for the farm. Um, as Ryan suggest, or was saying, we are a pretty open group and I think that's really critical um, for us. Um, one of the things uh, that is that I think about a lot is having moved to rural Manitoba is that there's a real decline. Um, rural depopulation is a real thing. And so we talk about creating these communities. Uh, and farm communities are very strong and they do exist, but there used to be many more people uh, out on the land. And so I feel like we have to make a real effort, uh, especially as young producers, we have to make an effort to to join together, to see each other, to visit and to discuss ideas. And I think, um, you know, you might have one or two people that you confide in that you talk to, but there might be, there may be value for you in creating a little bit of a larger um, peer group so you can discuss some of, some of these management issues uh, or family issues or things that are happening on the farm. And there's our contact information if you have any questions, um, but I am going to pass it over to these folks here.